Why does it always have to be about race? Let us explain. The World Wide Web has led to a plethora of options regarding what we read, buy, and share, and has incontestably changed the way we interact with the world. In the early 2000s, there was talk of a digital divide, a phenomenon that simply means some people have historically had less access to the, to the internet than others. Racial minorities are significantly less likely to have broadband access than their white counterparts. Note that she said broadband. In 1998, 53% of whites had access to the internet, while only 38% of black people did. By 2009, this gap between blacks, whites, and Latinos begins to close off. Coinciding with the rise of smartphone technology. By 2016, this, ca this gap had nearly been eliminated completely. Today, the internet has been used as a catalyst for social and political change. Here's a quick recap of 2017. Remember when everyone bashed Kendall Jenner's Pepsi commercial? Or that time when our Aunt Maxine Waters was praised for reclaiming her time? What about when hashtag, if they gun me down, which picture would they use was trending? Well, black Twitter was the root of these trending Twitter topics of 2017. Black Twitter is one of the many examples in which a social media platform is used to affirm certain beliefs socially, economically, and politically. Feminista Jones describes black Twitter as a collective of active, primarily African-American users that have created a virtual community to bring about social political changes. Ultimately, black Twitter exists to affirm the identities of black lives, share important methods in finessing white America, and educate newer generations about the black history that our educational systems fail to teach. Over time, social issues become political. Not only do these interactions affect what we see go on to social media, but it also provides opportunities for change offline. We've seen many social movements arise from online platforms. Black Lives Matter, for example, started as a hashtag, and now it's used in many protests nationwide. This just goes to show that it has definitely changed the way we organize and talk about inequalities people of color face. We tend to interact with people who hold similar views as us on social media. This leads to the creation of community and mobility of ideas. However, this also means that we are constantly exposed to viewpoints that merely affirm our beliefs rather than challenge them. Thus, filter bubbles appear. This means that users only see what they are already used to seeing based on algorithms used to generate curated content. This impacts what we see on social networks, ads, even our Google searches. Here's, Here's an, an example. example. Cynthia frequently visits Facebook. While on Facebook, she typically clicks on mostly conservative links. With filter bubbles and without Cynthia's knowledge, Facebook figures out what she typically likes to read and makes sure more of it is presented to her on her Facebook feed. By being bombarded with affirmations of our own beliefs, we begin to assume that anything that opposes our own ideas are wrong and must be rejected. It, it impacts, impacts more than, than just our, our Facebook, Facebook friends. friends. Americans are increasingly using social media as their primary source of news. Race in the digital age means that while people of color have traditionally had to rely solely on newspapers to share information and ideas, today everyone has a voice online that can create change in a fast and easily shareable manner. News articles are a dime a dozen on our timeline, and sharing information is just a click away. This is shaping the cultural landscape of social media. This goes to show that our experiences offline impact who we are online, the information we share, and what we consume. Just recently, black women were credited on social media for the election of Doug Jones in Senate. According to exit polls, 98% of black women voted for Jones. President Trump's use of Twitter has been one of his most notable forms of communication throughout his campaign and so far in his presidency. His constant use of Twitter has earned him the title, the social media president. However, this has not come without controversy. I'm sure many of us are familiar with the term fake news, which refers to intentionally misleading information spread through news channels and, of course, social media. Fake news has led to a decline in trust within American media. The fact that a third of pro-Trump tweets and a fifth of pro-Clinton tweets came from automated accounts raises questions about the future of social media and politics. In 2017, we witnessed the end of net neutrality. The implications behind this are frightening for people of color. Net neutrality means that once you pay for the internet, you have access to all of it with no gatekeepers. Internet service providers or ISPs could not favor or discriminate any particular website. Part of the reason why this is so controversial is because ISPs can now legally block, slow down content, or charge more for faster speeds. 
Part of the Internet's power is that it is accessible to all. And open internet played an important role in communities of color ability to mobilize, start online businesses, and create online platforms. The end of net neutrality means a step backwards for people of color to simply have a voice. With all of this, we can say with certainty that the way we think about news and politics has to change now that most of our news comes from social media. Four of 10 social media users admit to having blocked or minimize content due to political reasons, according to Pew Research. So whether you like it or not, politics will be a part of your timeline. We encourage everyone to examine their own biases, and more importantly, take other arguments into consideration. In order to be fully aware citizens in the digital age, we must make a conscious effort to master media literacy. While the internet can be a powerful tool for social change, especially for people of color, we must work to get out of these filter bubbles and examine our news for what it really is. Thank you.